Greetings, and welcome to Unsupervised Learning. I'm Daniel Meisler, and this show explores the intersection of security, technology, and society, and thinks about what might be coming next. Every Monday, there's a news and analysis episode that condenses 5 to 20 hours of reading and analysis into a 15-minute summary, as well as regular essays, interviews, and book reviews that cover specific topics. The goal is to give you a concise, curated update on the most interesting things happening in the world, and to explore ideas that give you something to think about and prepare you for what's coming next. All right, welcome to episode 300. 300 episodes. It's been about six years, five to six years now. And thank you to everyone who's been listening. It's not the most exciting podcast, but it's dense. It gets the job done, and I appreciate those who appreciate it. Starting off with security news. CISA, FBI, and NSA have released a joint cybersecurity advisory around Conti ransomware. Primary attack methods include spear phishing, RDP, phone calls, fake software, and vulnerabilities in external assets. The Republican Governors Association had its email server hacked by a state actor. Microsoft is disabling basic authentication in Exchange Online starting October 1st. This will not affect on-prem, obviously. China has deemed all cryptocurrency-related activity to be illegal and is moving to ban the whole ecosystem, essentially. Bitcoin naturally crashed at the news, this was last week, and took all the other major coins with it, and most of the minor coins as well. Uh, they've significantly recovered since then, but yeah, it was it was quite a hit. This has been kind of anticipated in that world, so I think we'll, we'll recover from it, but who really knows with crypto? ByteDance has limited TikTok use to 40 minutes a day for Chinese kids under 14. Cisco released updates for multiple products. SonicWall patches a critical vulnerability in SMA appliances. A database of 106 million visitors to Thailand was exposed online. Security Trails acquires Surface.io, which was very similar to security trails, except for service.io does vulnerabilities as well as attack surface. F5 is buying threat stack for $68 million in cash. AI powered disinformation detection platform Blackbird raises 10 million. Cyber risk management platform Panorays or Panoris pulls 42 million. And LG purchased automotive security company Cybellum for 240 million. Technology news. Surface Laptop Studio is Microsoft's new laptop, and it's getting strong reviews. Its primary feature is a 2400 by 1600 display that works at 120 hertz and supports Dolby Vision. AWS is getting an Auckland, New Zealand region in 2024. Amazon has deployed cameras in half of its delivery vehicles, and they're now having 48% fewer accidents and 77% fewer run red lights and stop signs. The cameras are still controversial, however, due to the perceived dehumanizing nature of Amazon's obsession with worker productivity. Corey Doctorow says the framework, capital the, capital framework, is the most exciting laptop he's ever used. I'm somewhat intrigued, but I confess after reading a lot of his work that I find many of his technological choices to be potential characters in his novels rather than actual tech choices. It's like he's picking stuff to be used based on how cool it'll make him sound when he mentions it later in a conversation somewhere. So that is somehow more annoying than talking about luxury or expensive things where you're also trying to make yourself sound cool. But this is more like RMS-like. Like I browse the web using Ed and an oscilloscope. And the reason for saying that, or the reason for doing it, who knows how much they actually do it behind closed doors, but the reason for even doing it at all, it has to be somewhat so that you can talk about the fact that you do it later, just to get the oohs and ahs. Perhaps it's too harsh, right? I, I It's just the vibe that I get from Dr. O. And I think when this laptop has iFixit teardown, videos or, you know, images in the conversation. It just adds to that sort of vibe for me. 
I just can't imagine a world where I want to tear apart and fix or upgrade my laptops. To me, it feels like scene-based rather than task-oriented computing. But who knows? And I want to take my own advice, which is to criticize people based on their content rather than how they make the content. So by my count, he's produced a lot more books than I have. So however he gets that done, I give him credit for it. It looks like Apple is developing iPhone slash watch features to detect depression and cognitive decline. It's a partnership with the university. Amazon's ad group made $6.9 billion in the first quarter of 2021. Slack launches clips, which are video messages that help you avoid meetings. So you could basically do screen recordings, you know, uh, cameras and microphone So basically sound and visuals combined with screen share to make it like a short presentation and then just share that instead of having meaning, which I think is super smart. AI-powered supply chain visibility platform Atlana raises 15 million and software supply chain platform CloudSmith raises 15 million. Both of these titles come from the same website and they were remarkably similar. They're both doing supply chain visibility They both are a platform and they both raised 15 million. It was so peculiar that I had to check, but yeah, it is two separate companies and two separate articles. Human news, the murder rate rose by 30% in the U.S. in 2020. We just found the oldest human footprints in North America. They're 23,000 years old in New Mexico. A new study says it's your behavior and not your age that slows your metabolism, mostly. In short, being sedentary is the main culprit, and adding high-intensity bursts along with walking throughout the day can help significantly. TikTokers are investing by mirroring trades made by people in Congress. And got a couple sites here in the newsletter. It's It's a member newsletter this week, so you have to be subscribed. But got a couple sites here, Tracker Site 1, Tracker Site 2. One is for, I think, all of Congress, or maybe just the House, and the other one is for the Senate. But yeah, it actually shows their trades, because of course they have to be public. Welcome to America. TikTok is merging slash colliding with Hollywood. So essentially, Hollywood is now going to TikTok people and merging them into existing stars and like making episodes and TV and who knows, maybe eventually movies. Addison Ray was one of the people mentioned in this article. In the 1980s, everyone was worried about population explosion, and now a lot of people are worried about population decline, especially in the heavily industrialized nations, US, UK, Europe, it's not a nation, but uh, Japan. A lot of population decline going on in those areas, and of course, there's still a lot of population growth in Africa in China, and in India. Content ideas and analysis, predictive purchases. This VentureBeat article makes a good argument around predictive transactions. Basically, you come home from work, so essentially I guess you went to an office or something, and you have a bunch of Amazon deliveries waiting for you, and it's stuff that you needed but didn't have time to order. So the idea, it would be groceries that you're going to, maybe you want to eat that food for the day, or maybe it's a bunch of cleaning supplies or whatever it was, but you didn't have a chance to order it, but it knew that you needed it somehow. So I wrote about this in 2016 in my book, and uh, I think it's a really powerful idea. I saw it though as more of a function of the person's digital assistant. I mean, I suppose it could be and will be both, right? It'll be the companies themselves on the back end, like Amazon, but I think it has to be the digital assistant as well. The reason I think it'll be more on the digital assistant side, and when I say digital assistant, I mean essentially like an AI agent running on your personal device, which right now would be like a phone. But unless the DA companies and the back end companies are the same company, so so obviously if it's Apple or if it's Amazon, for example, if they have their own phone or they're merged completely with Apple or, or whatever. Or maybe the, the phone side is Google. But let's take an example, your mood, 
right? The system most likely to know your mood is one that's connected most intimately to you. Cameras in your house, biometrics on your body, voice analysis, gait analysis, analysis of your conversational tone. Combine all that with the way you're driving home, how many meetings you had, combined with what you've eaten and how much exercise and sleep you've had recently. And now the AI has a pretty good chance of guessing what you might want or need. But that's a lot of context. I could see Apple or Amazon earning that trust over time, but it'll be somewhat harder for Google and much harder for Facebook, I think, especially right now. And then you need to own or have access to the entire software and hardware ecosystem that makes all that gathering of data possible. So that's another limiter. So I think the bottom line is to do prediction truly well, you're going to need to have context and context requires data from both the back end, like Amazon has a lot of data, but you're going to need it from meat space as well, right? From the human body, from observing your behavior. Notes. This is my 300 episode as I mentioned in the beginning. And I want to thank all of you for making this a thing. I'm humbled and enriched by the knowledge that there are people like you in the world, people who value curiosity and positivity above all else. Thank you for being an increasingly important part of my life. And that is mostly to subscribers and members who have supported me throughout these five to six years. But it's also for listeners of the podcast as well. Really do appreciate it. We had a good book club yesterday, and we selected the new book that can be found at the bottom of the newsletter. I'll be putting it at the bottom of every member episode from now on. That was a good recommendation. Thanks to Vicky for rightly recommending some BIPOC perspective diversity in our reading. This month's book is a good example of that. A number of us in the book club acknowledged that we'd never have read this book if it weren't for this book club. And most of us had never even heard of the author. Diversity and perspective is both an exercise and a reward. And like other types of health and fitness, it's something you have to work to maintain. I'm excited about the new foundation series on Apple TV+. Plus. The first episode is beautiful, but <clears throat> yeah, a little bit slow. I feel like I want to read the books again but I don't really have time for that because I've got too many other books in progress. The new iPhone, I got the one terabyte pro is a decent upgrade. I would say a strong upgrade. I don't know why I wrote decent. The things you'll notice the most are the battery, the screen and the camera. I'm not sure what order those will appear to you, but for me, it's battery screen, then camera battery basically takes me all day now where before I only got like two thirds of the day. So I would say it's like a one third improvement, at least for my use case, over the 12 Pro. And after Paul in our Slack channel posted about this telescope, which is unbelievable and $45,000, I was hoping it was like $6,000, like at the top end of what I would pay. And no, it was $45,000, but it also needed to be installed, like embedded directly into your yard, uh, which I don't have a yard or visibility around my house where that would be good anyway. So I was kind of happy about that, but I ended up buying its smaller sibling, which is called the Stellina. And I've been researching telescopes and this is the right combination of power and Apple like interface I was looking for. You basically just tell it via a mobile app to go find whatever it goes and does it. And then you don't have an eyepiece. You're just looking through your iPhone, which is just fantastic. And it does a whole bunch of astrophotography stuff uh, naturally by itself. So it, it can stack images. It could take images over time, like one every 10 seconds and stack them up and make a really nice image. And it also does software-based accounting for light pollution, which is important because I'm in the Bay Area. So really looking forward to that. Discovery, how to live in Airbnbs for the price of an apartment lease. The first rule of machine learning. Try it without machine learning. Does your company have a security.txt file? This is from Krebs. A visual of global submarine cables. Walking versus driving is now part of the culture wars. Thanks to Joel for that one. How Putin's bodyguards work. Are you playing to play or playing to win? Recommendations. 
The better the advice, the more boring it'll sound. Ask successful people later in life what got them there, and the answers will put you to sleep. Pay closer attention to that boring advice. It's the best stuff out there. And the aphorism for the week? There are periods when public opinion is the worst of opinion. There are periods when public opinion is the worst of opinion. Nicolas de Chamfort. All right. Thanks for listening to this episode of Unsupervised Learning. If you're not a member already, please consider signing up at danielmeisler.com slash subscribe. Members get the newsletter every week instead of twice a month, as well as access to the UL Slack channel and our private RSS feed for member-only content. Either way, if you enjoy the show, please share it with your friends. We'll see you next time.